Hi there, so we have seen a ton of Android TVs of late and between all that Onita dropped a smart TV with a Fire TV OS and frankly I was quite impressed. Fire TV OS is like having a built-in Fire Stick on a TV. I've done a detailed review video on the Onita TV so if you like to see it you can click the card here. I'll also leave the link of the video in the description. Anyway, I thought I'll compare it with an Android TV and what better than Mi TV of course. So here is the Mi TV 4A Pro 43 inches and the Onita Fire TV 43 inches. Both are full HD TVs, priced between 20 to 22,000, making it perfect to pitch these two against each other. But before we begin, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates. Also follow me on my social media handles, you'll see the names right here. This is your friend Tech Singh. let's get started. Let's have a look at the specs and compare it. So there is a lot common between these two. Same A53 quad core CPU, same GPU, same full HD resolution, same 1 GB RAM and 8 GB storage. Coming to the differences, the Mi TV has a 20 watt sound output while the Oneida TV has 16 watt. Of course, the Fire TV OS on the Oneida TV and the official Android TV 9 on the Mi TV 4A Pro 43 inches. So let's start this comparison taking the basics into account before buying a smart TV. Build and ports, display, operating system, sound and price. Let's begin with build and ports. So here are the remotes of both the TVs, very identical, minimalistic design. Both are Bluetooth remotes and have voice search support. The Anita TV remote has few hotkeys to quick access some apps which the Mi TV remote lacks. No mute button on the Mi TV as well, no video controls such as pause, play, forward, back either. Which trust me come very handy when you have them. I'd say the Onida Fire TV remote is a clear winner out of the two. Also something that might not matter much but it's still worth mentioning. You have to pay 500 rupees for the wall mount unit for Mi TV when the technician comes to install it while the Onida Fire TV the mount is provided in the box and it's free. Moving to the TVs, here are both the TVs side by side. Both TVs have glossy bezels, the one on the Onida TV are flat while the Mi TV are rounder. Oneida TV side and lower bezels are just a tad thicker than the Mi TV. Plastic stands on both, not the best quality but pretty functional. From the front, both devices look almost identical. Moving back towards the ports, all the ports on the Mi TV are on the side which makes it extremely easy to access even when the Mi TV is wall mounted. Oneida TVs, some ports are on the side while some are back. Both have 3.5 headphone jack, 3 HDMI ports and AV composite. One USB port on the Fire TV while three on the Mi TV. Minimum two USB ports are a must I think. I'm surprised why Onida didn't put two. Anyway, for digital output the Mi TV has SPDIF while the Onida TV has an optical port. When it comes to the ports and connectivity, Mi TV has a slight edge over the Onida TV. Firstly because extra USB port and secondly convenience to access all of them. Overall the build quality on both these devices is really good. Moving to the display. Both TVs have 1920x1080 pixel full HD resolution. Now let's compare the display side by side by playing a video sample. For this comparison we have set the picture settings to standard and the backlight to 50 on both. Here is a video sample playing on YouTube, videos play without any lag or stutter on both. You can see the blacks look deeper on the Onida TV while more brighter on the Mi TV. Both look really good though. But I prefer the IPS panel as the brightness levels are making the picture look really nice. Play 4K videos from a pen drive on both. No 4K videos worked on the Oneida TV, but on the Mi TV, they all played flawlessly. Finally, played a full HD MP4 video and it played well on both. So, if you're someone who plays a lot of videos from your pen drive, then you better stick to full HD videos for the Oneida TV. Let's quickly play something from a set up box on both. These are SD channels and they look amazing on both. But I'll give the edge to the Mi TV here for more detail in the images. Somehow the Onida TV feels a little softer. However, the colors on the Onida are brilliant. Here are the HD channels. Oh my god, it's very difficult to decide. The blacks are amazing on the Onida TV, but the picture quality definitely looks sharper and crisper on the Mi TV. Frankly, they both look really good. Moving to the operating system. Yes, this is going to be an important deciding factor between the two. Fire TV OS on the Onida, Android TV OS on the Mi TV. Goes without saying, Android TV OS is more popular. With Android TV, you get the official Play Store that has tons of apps and games. On the Fire TV OS, there is also an App Store and the collection is quite impressive. 
all the popular apps are available on both Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, Z5, Sony Live, you name it and it's there. The collection on the Android TV App Store is definitely higher though. On the Mi TV, you also get Patchwall OS. In Patchwall, you get integrated apps, divided into categories, content from all the popular apps is available in tile-like format. Both TVs support Bluetooth 4.2, so you can connect your favorite headphones to it very easily. Tested Netflix, Amazon Prime and YouTube on both and they worked equally well. Since Mi TV has the Android TV, we get Chromecast support, so you can cast videos, pictures, music from your phone very easily. With Oneida TV, you get screen mirroring, which is like Miracast. It works like a breeze with Android phone. Unfortunately, you cannot screen mirror your iPhone to either of these devices natively. You can, but you'll need to install a third-party app, but that's for a separate video altogether. You can sideload third-party apps on both. I installed Movie HD on them and it worked perfectly fine. When we press the power button on the Mi TV, it powers off the TV and takes almost a minute to reboot the TV. When we press the power button on the Oneida TV, the TV goes in standby mode and when you press the power button on, it turns the TV on ready to use in 2 or 3 seconds. We can put the Mi TV in standby mode too. Press and hold the power button and you'll get an option for screen off and this display will turn off. Similarly, if you press the power button, the TV turns on and is ready to use in 2 seconds. Overall, the user experience, I found the Fire TV OS far more fluid and snappier. Apps open and close faster compared to the Android TV OS as well. Moving to the sound, the speaker on the Mi TVs have 20 watt sound output while the Oneida TV is 16 watt. Let's hear an audio sample. They both get really loud, but the sound on the Mi TV was fuller, clearer with decent bass. Oneida was just flat, only mids and highs, zero bass. LED speakers don't produce good sound quality because of space limitations. But if I had to pick, Mi TV takes the cake when it comes to the sound quality. So finally, which one should you buy? <laughs> oh my god, that's really confusing. Okay, let's get the priorities right. Firstly, both are priced at 21999 Probably 1000 rupees here and there, but that shouldn't matter. Not many TV manufacturers are selling the Fire TV OS. It doesn't mean that it's not good. In fact, if it had come before as built in on many TVs, then probably Android TV OS had no chance. It's so easy, fast, and fluid. But Android TV is the current ruler of the Smart TV OS. I really see a lot of potential in the Fire TV OS. I believe it's going to start a new trend, so if you're willing to take the plunge, I suggest you do. No chance you're going to regret it. Also, screen mirroring with the Fire TV is more reliable. But if you want to play safe with the Android TV OS, then the Mi TV is your ideal option. Both TVs tick all the boxes for a 43-inch budget smart TV. I'll leave the links for both in the description. If you'd like to buy one, do check it out. So I hope this video was helpful. Write down in the comments and let me know if there are any questions. I'll be happy to help. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.